Hello everyone and welcome back to another lecture on syntax. In this lecture we discuss constituency. We discuss the need for internal structure in sentences. So in a sentence like the elephant in the zoo is drinking from the pool. What is the meaning of this sentence? First thing we ought to recognize is that the meaning of this sentence is not merely the meaning of the plus the meaning of elephant, plus the meaning of in, plus the meaning of the, plus zoo, etc. Take this as an example. John ate the apple. This does not mean the same thing as the apple ate John. If the meaning of the sentence was the meaning of John, plus the meaning of ate, plus the meaning of the apple, then this should end up meaning the same thing but it doesn't. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 does not equal 3 plus 2 plus 1. Of course in mathematics it does, but here it doesn't. So the point is, we have to look at the internal structure of a sentence. We have to recognize here that somehow the word elephant is more connected to the than it is to in. So it seems more natural to say the elephant than it is to say elephant in. Now part of the reason why one seems natural and the other seems odd is the idea of constituency. A constituent is a group of words or one word that functions as one unit. So really constituents are part of the internal structure of a sentence. But is there internal structure to sentences really? Well we have the intuition that the pool and from the pool may function as a unit. You can say someone is drinking from the pool. We know that elephant here seems like it functions as a unit. So does the zoo, but also in the zoo altogether. What other pieces of evidence that we have that there's internal structure in sentences? Let's look at how yes, no questions are formed. Let's try to follow the scientific method. Take the sentence, for example, the man who is winning has been cheating. A yes no question for this sentence would be has the man who is winning been cheating? How did we get to this structure? Well first let's look at a more simple sentence. Something like John is nice. How do you form a yes no question out of John is nice? Something like this would produce is John nice? So what hypothesis can we come up with here? How about we say that John was the first word, is was the second, and nice was the third. What we did was put the second word before the first. So our hypothesis could be move the second word before the first. But now instead of John is nice, what if the sentence was the man is nice? Now if we were going to follow our hypothesis, we should move man up here and get man the is nice. But that's wrong. So let's modify our hypothesis. Could it be that we have to move the third word? That's not going to work either. So maybe we could say let's move the verb. Okay, how about if the sentence was the man is eating. The verb is eating. In this case, we would end up with eating the man is, and that's wrong as well. So what if we say that instead of moving the verb, we move the auxiliary verb. Is the man eating? That's a correct outcome. But how about the sentence, the man has been eating. Now which auxiliary do we move? The first or the second one? The answer is the first one. Okay, so we move the first auxiliary. But now let's go back to our original sentence. The first auxiliary in the man who is winning has been cheating is is. But we ended up moving has, as you can see here. So now what? What are we going to say? What is the rule? Perhaps we need to say that we need to move either the, auxil the first auxiliary from the main clause, not a subordinate clause, for example. The main clause auxiliary is here. A second way we can say this is to recognize that the man who is running, or sorry, the man who is winning is a subject. 
So we should say take the first auxiliary after the subject is finished. Now in both of these solutions, if you can tell, we had to resort to an idea that there is structure governing how these sentences are formed. We now understand that is is part of the subject and the subject entirely is part of the sentence as a whole. So is is closely related to the subject or more closely related to the subject than it is to the entire sentence. So that's the basic idea behind structure. So now that there's structure, which parts of this structure function together as a unit? This is what we call a constituent. So John is nice. All of this forms a sentence. The constituents of this sentence, John is nice, can also be grouped up into ways that can function as units. So we somehow feel that is nice is a unit, and then John plus is nice creates the sentence. So how do we know what is a constituent and what is not? Luckily for us, there's something called the constituency test. That's going to be our topic for the next lecture. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.